Hey guys, welcome back to this video. So it's been a while, it's been a while since I have done a Q&A. So I asked you guys questions on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I try to do these. I wish I could do them more often, but really they're kind of labor intensive. I love doing them, but you really have to be like, like on your phone a lot. And um, I've got a baby. <laughs> she makes things a lot more complicated. If you're a mom, like you just know kids just, they just complicate things. They are time suckers. They're life suckers. They really are, but they're so cute. Anyways, I digress. First, I wanted to say thank you guys for sticking with me. I know as I became a mom and everything, my channel has changed. I have not been cranking out as many videos as I used to, and that doesn't mean that I'm not super passionate about being a nurse or this channel. I love this channel. I love being a nurse. Um, I just have so many priorities in my life right now and I'm thankful that I can put my eggs in multiple baskets but sometimes I have to pull my egg from my YouTube basket because I'm busy doing other things so I appreciate you guys sticking with me and I'm, I have so many ideas it's just I gotta sit down and do them so thank you and let's just get into this Q&A. The first question I got is is it possible to work full-time and go to nursing school full-time? Yes. It is. Is it ideal? I guess it really depends on your situation and your life. I know many people that had to work full time and go to nursing school full time. I know a lot of people that they didn't need to work full time or they took out student loans or whatnot. So that's what worked for them. Personally, when I was in nursing school, I worked about 20 ish hours a week. It was quite a bit between going to nursing school full time and working part time. And I even made my own schedule. I taught piano lessons. So it like wasn't that sh like stressful or strenuous on me, but it was just another commitment that I had to do, but it worked. I made it through and honestly it's possible, but every situation is different. Just remember nursing school is temporary. This is not your forever. So when things get hard, you're just take it day by day and you're one step closer. <laughs> Another person asked, would I ever change from ICU? So, I don't know. I love the ICU. It really, really fits who I am as a person and what I like and love about nursing. So, I think I will always do something related to ICU, whether it's bedside or taking more of an educational position. I don't know. Um, since I'm wrapping up on my master's, I really wanna to look towards the educational world, but I don't foresee myself leaving bedside to do that. So maybe it'll be an additional thing that I wanna do. I don't know. I, I love ICU. I don't foresee myself like going to tele or the ER or psych or changing it up, um, but who knows? That's the beauty of nursing is there's just a lot of options. I love this question. Someone said, how do I raise my confidence in clinicals and stop being insecure and feeling like I am incompetent? Honestly, this is a feeling that every nursing student feels because let's be real, you know some stuff, but you really don't know stuff and that's okay. As a preceptor or a nursing instructor, you know that. And it's those few bad eggs of nurses that make students feel like they're incompetent and insecure. Push those nurses aside. And when you get someone that cares and is a good preceptor and educator, they're hopefully not gonna make you feel that way. Yes, from some tips, and I haven't given you any. I'm gonna give you some tips. One is before you go into clinicals, just have some general knowledge of the area that you're gonna be in. So if you're going into ICU, maybe just kind of learn a little bit about ventilators or ABGs or cardiac rhythm strips. Just a little bit of information so that way when you're there and you see that stuff you can show that you know that you're not going to be expected to know everything and part of gaining your confidence is going to clinicals and getting these experiences it's okay that you can't confidently walk into a patient's room and know everything you're not expected to i think that as nursing students we put so much pressure on ourselves to perform at the level of a nurse that's been in the nursing world for 20 years. That's ridiculous. So don't do that to yourself. Don't put that pressure on yourselves. Just go to learn. Don't have, I wanna say don't have expectations, but also have some expectations. When I have nursing students that come in and follow me and I say, hey, what are your goals for the day? What do you wanna do? And they say, eh, I just wanna be here. I just wanna learn. And you're like, 
cool. But I kind of like when students are like, I'd love to see an intubation or I'd love to learn more about ventilators or I'd love to learn more about ABGs. And then I'm like, sweet, I can do that for you. I can help you with that. Have intentions when you go in, but don't have unrealistic expectations, if that makes sense. This person said that they're halfway through nursing school and now they don't know if this is what they want for their life. Help. Um, that's tough. It really is because I, I feel like there's, there's a mixed crowd of people that go into nursing. You've got the people that are like, I love nursing. This is what I've always wanted to do. Woo, go into nursing. And you've got the people that are like, eh, you know, it's kind of, I like the medical field. Um, there seems to be a need for nurses, so I know I can get a job, but yeah, you know. And then there's the people that are like, just, I don't know why they're there. But if you're kind of in this middle crowd, um, it can be tough when maybe you're in a clinical rotation that you absolutely hate and you can't really see beyond that. You're like, I hate this. This is not for me. And my best advice is there are so many jobs in the nursing field. You just have to figure out what you're passionate about. And the beauty of nursing is you can just do so many things. So if, even if you don't like bedside nursing, but you love teaching, you can teach. You can be a teacher but you're a nurse. If you like the legal side of nursing, you can be in that area. If you wanna work from home, you can work from home. Or if you wanna be in a call center, you could be in a call center. Literally, you could do every single job in the world, but as a nurse. So when you're in nursing school, they just show you the basic acute care side of clinicals. They don't really show you a whole lot of outpatient or they don't show you a whole lot of like the other miscellaneous nursing jobs. That just because that is maybe not what you're passionate about, that's okay. Think about something else that interests you and then I'm sure there's a nursing job for it. You may need to get some experience in the hospital setting beforehand, but what? You get a year, you get two, and then you can go do your dream job. I think that's worth it. This person said they're debating on an iPad for school to be more paperless. What are my thoughts? I think it's awesome. I'm all for the like try to be more electronic, but you have to do what works for you. If you learn best by handwriting things out, go for it. I will say, it's a little bit quicker to be typing and doing things electronically, copying, pasting, making your notes as you go along in nursing school. Um, but if you handwrite things and that's how you learn better, do it. If you wanna be paperless, do it. You have to do what works best for you. Is it nice to be paperless because you're trying to save the environment? Sure, but if you can't be paperless, then maybe like do some more recycling at home. It's all about balance. My dad asked me, how did I make such a cute baby? I mean, just look at me. I'm just kidding, I don't know, she, but she is. She's really cute. Time management tips. How to know what's important versus what's not so important. What to focus on. This is a great question because as, as um, nursing students, new grad nurses, you feel like everything is important. Everything. So I actually saw a tip on Instagram and I forget the page that posted it, but it gave a tip about at the beginning of your shift, write down the things that need to be done within an hour, the things that need to be done in four hours, and the things that could be done by the end of your shift. So that kind of helps you prioritize. A couple other tips is see your most sick patient first. I take that back. You wanna see all your patients right away just to get an idea of making sure there's no safety issues, making sure that they have their call light, things like that. But you wanna assess in detail your most sick patient first. My other tip is to delegate. If you need help doing a blood sugar or someone or getting your patient up to the bathroom, Delegate that to your tech if it's appropriate. The next tip is to take the pressure off yourself. You are one person and one human being and you physically cannot always do every single thing all by yourself. Take away that pride. As new grad nurses, you guys wanna do everything on your own because you feel like you need to like be up to the standard of whatever you're imagining in your head. But you, you can't do everything on your own. I can't tell you how many times I ask another nurse like, hey, I'm super busy. Do you mind just checking and seeing what my patient in room 18 wants? Or I call the tech and say, hey, can you page this doctor for me? Use your resources. And the last tip of that is take a step back and look at the bigger picture of things. It's easy to get overwhelmed with all the tasks you have at hand, especially when you work a medical surgical floor or tele when you've got four, five, six, seven, eight patients, whatever it may be. It's easy to be like, oh my gosh, I have so many things to do, but really take a step back and think about bigger picture. Is it okay if the patient in room five gets their Tylenol 10 minutes later? Is it okay that the CT scan that's been ordered for four days gets done in four hours? Probably. The Nomad nurse, Crosby Steen, asks, will you please do a video on how much better ER nurses are than IC nurses? Thanks. No. 
I'm just kidding. I just want to insert this right here because I'm gonna get people that work the ER or want to work ER and then be like, you're such an ER hater. I am not an ER hater. I think ER nurses are awesome and do awesome things. I think every field of nursing is necessary and important. What the ER finds important is different than what the ICU finds important and we know that. Every job is needed and you should respect the nurses in every position. Last question is what is the hardest part of being a nurse? I think this is gonna be different for everyone. I think the hardest part for me, two things, two things, this would be four, two things. One, the social drama. When you come in to do your job and you have a super, super, super dick, I don't mean to say that, <laughs> a super, super, super sick patient come in and you're like running your tail off just trying to take care of their medical needs. But then you've got the social drama of mama doesn't want this, baby mama doesn't want this, they're fighting in the room, and you're like having to deal with that while also taking care of your patient. That is a really hard part about being a nurse. I will say as you get more experience, you get better at handling that and also talking with family members in a respectful way to let them know that like as much as you want to break up their family drama, I'm just kidding, you wouldn't say that, but you're there for the patient and most of the time people respect that. So that's, that's difficult, the social drama. The second thing that's hard for me, um, and everyone's gonna be different about this. When we're keeping people alive that clearly have no quality of life and it's against the patient's wishes. If the patient wants to be kept on life support, trached, pegged, sent to a facility, that's fine. That's their wish, we respect that. But when the patient said clearly, don't intubate me, don't keep me on life-sustaining measures, and then we have family members who are revoking that, that's that's hard for me. I'm not saying I don't treat people with respect regardless, but that is a difficult part about being in in the ICU specifically, but in the medical world in general. Okay guys, this video is super long. I still have more questions, so I will try and do another Q&A at some point in my life, whenever that may be. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, drop them below. And I'll see you in my next video.